Welcome to the God's Peculiar People podcast, where we learn about the lives and characteristics of God's people. Thank you for tuning in again to the God's Peculiar People podcast. Uh, today we're going to start a series of episodes that are going to be published sporadically throughout the year on like fifth Tuesdays or just when I need to fill in episode. Uh, these are all being pre-recorded in January, hopefully, <laughs> January, February. Uh, wanting to, f- to already have some things pre- pre-planned, but talk about the uh, disciples and the apostles. But it's important that we know these people. Uh, Most of us know who Peter is, who John is, uh, and that might be the extent. Uh, We might, oh, uh, Judas, of course, we might know Judas's name, but we may not know much about the others, and that's because there's not really a lot to know about the others. It's very limited. Some of the the disciples, um, we're going to do a couple of them all in one episode because there's just so little that we know about them. Um, we, we'll look at like names, what do the names mean, things like that. But we're really very limited on some of them as to what is said. Some of them, their name only appears in the list of disciples and apostles, but that is it. There's no other mention of them doing anything. We know that they were there because of the collective term, you know, the disciples, uh, the apostles, but we don't read of them doing anything or necessarily speaking to anyone or speaking about something. Some of them, the ones we do, it's very interesting to read about, like uh, Thomas, Andrew. Uh, there's some interesting things that we've kind of maybe overlooked. So I wanted to talk about those things, talk about those people. You know, they are God's peculiar people. They were maybe what we could consider like the, the first Uh, peculiar people because they were the ones who were close. They were seen as being different. They were identified as you are with Jesus. And so their lives maybe didn't always scream, (laughs) I'm with Jesus. We know Peter, he he denied Jesus three times, but still that's who they were. They were God's peculiar people. They were those who followed Jesus. So let's begin by looking at just collectively the 12 disciples. So they are known, as I said, collectively as the disciples, the 12 Jesus disciples, Jesus followers, apostles. And these were 12 men chosen by Christ to witness Jesus' miracles and to receive additional instruction regarding Jesus' work. There are four Bible passages that list the name of Jesus' disciples. We find that in Matthew 10, verses 2 through 4, Mark 3, 16 through 19, Luke 6, 14 through 16, and then we find it in Acts chapter 1, verse 13. And in Acts, we find one name, that of Judas missing, but a new name, that of Matthias. For the sake of the series of episodes on Jesus' disciples, we're going to mainly focus on those who are mentioned in the Gospels, but at the very end, we might do an episode on Matthias and maybe that whole uh, situation where they are choosing who will take Judas's place. But the, the Gospels mention the disciples' names in three of the four. We find it in Matthew, Mark, Luke. John does not mention the names of the disciples. And in each of the Gospels, the names remain the same, what they're referred to as in the list, except for in one. In, in one, we find, in Matthew, we find Levius, surnamed Thaddeus. Thaddeus also appears in Mark, but in Luke we find the name Judas, the brother of James. So 11 names are consistent, but with this, the 12th, there's like three different names that he appears under. I also should mention that Matthew um, is sometimes referred to as Levi as well. So I guess there's technically, there's two, two different people that are named, but uh, for Thaddeus, Levius, or Judas, the brother of James, this guy seems to have three different names that he's referred to, and we'll talk about that more in the future when we get to talking about those guys. Now, throughout Jesus' earthly ministry, Jesus had many followers. After John baptized Jesus in the River Jordan, many who'd previously followed John left him to follow Jesus. We find that in John 1, verses 36 through 38. We find in John 6 that great multitudes were following Jesus many would have considered themselves to have been his disciples. They were following him. They wanted to learn from him. And so Jesus had, truly, he didn't just have 12 disciples. He had many, many, many disciples. We find it throughout the Bible, throughout the New Testament, that there are 255 uses of just the term disciples. Some of those are in reference to uh, John, his disciples, his followers. 
this term disciple is used for more than just the 12. Many times it will say specifically the 12, the 12 disciples. And it's not until Matthew 10 that Jesus specifically names the 12. Now, these 12 will then become apostles. We see that in Matthew 10, verse 2. Now, the names of the 12 apostles are these. So Jesus had many, many, many disciples, but specifically, he chose those who would be, what we term later, apostles. We still reference them still as just the 12 disciples, which is fine, but we do find that they will be referred to as apostles. But for clarification, let's, let's make sure we understand what a disciple is. We know easily that a disciple is one who follows. Uh, the Webster's 1828 Dictionary defines a disciple as a follower, an adherent to the doctrines of another. This is someone who is following, who wants to learn from someone. Now, we see later in John 6, as Jesus tells how he is the bread of life and that he was sent from the Father. And so we find in John 6, verse 6, some people didn't believe that. Let me read that verse for you here. Oh, I said 6, verse 6, sorry. 6, verse 66. It says, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. This isn't talking about the 12. The 12 have been chosen to be apostles. They're disciples. They're choosing to follow him, but he has chosen them to be his apostles, to be closer to him. But disciples, they can walk away. And they did. Many of them walked away. John 6, verse 66, we see that many of them turned back. He's talking about, hey, I am the bread of life. I am. This is who I am. And many of them did not believe that and turned and walked away. Having chosen the twelve, Jesus turns to them in John 6, verse 66 and says, Will ye also go away? Peter, speaking for himself and the others, replies, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life, and we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. This is their testimony. They're not just the casual observer, someone who's uh, following someone for the short term. Think about it. On, I don't know if you've been on, on YouTube recently. I spend too much time on YouTube. All over YouTube, there are people who want to teach you about journaling, time management, uh, productivity, calendar blocking, all of these things. And there are there are so many people who are teaching all of these different things, how to, to be a better person, how to make yourself better, be more productive. And there's people that maybe one person watches, but someone else doesn't. And maybe someone watches a certain person for so long, and then they're like, eh, I don't like the way they're teaching that. I didn't like that one thing they said. I'm going to go follow someone else. Followers. They're following. Um, we have to be careful with that nowadays. You With Instagram, we call it our followers. Um, but someone can, can leave one person. They're interested maybe for a while in what that person is teaching, and then as that, that instructor, that teacher changes maybe their philosophy a little bit, how they, they choose to do things, their life changes, maybe they're not posting as often, then people, the followers, decide to, eh, I don't like that, I'm going to go find someone else who's more aligned in the way that I want to think about things. Well, that's what happens here. Jesus didn't change. He was further expounding on who he was and what he was going to do, but he hadn't changed. But people were like, no, that's not quite what we thought you were going to talk about. That wasn't quite the philosophy we thought you were going to go with. That, we don't really think you are, I am. So we're going to leave. We're, we're not going to follow you anymore. Human nature, it doesn't change. If we don't hear what we want to hear, we will go and try to find someone else who's speaking the way we want to hear. And so these disciples turn back. But Peter and the twelve... Jesus chose them not because he just needed 12 disciples, 12 apostles. He chose them because he knew their hearts, that they would follow him, that they wanted the truth. They wanted to learn more. And so he chose them to be his devoted inner circle of followers that would later go and spread the the, the good news of the gospel around the world. So for many disciples, Jesus chose these 12 to be with him. But from those 12, he chose three, Peter, James, and John, to be even closer still. These three would be witnesses to Jesus raising the, the girl from the dead in Mark 5, verse 35 through 43. They would be there for the transfiguration in Matthew 17, 1 through 13. And they would be there falling asleep as Jesus agonized the night away in Gethsemane, knowing what lay before him in Matthew 26. 
But what was the purpose? Why did there? Why did Jesus need disciples? Why did he need these twelve uh, that would be apostles? In Mark three verse seven, we see Jesus with his disciples. There were many following him. But in Mark three verses thirteen through nineteen, we see Jesus calling unto himself these twelve men. So it, let me read a couple of these verses. So starting in verse thirteen, and he goeth up into a mountain, and calleth unto him whom he would, and they came unto him. And he ordained twelve that they should be with him. That's one of the purposes that he might send them forth to preach. That's another purpose. And to have power to heal the sick, a third purpose. And to cast out devils, a fourth purpose. So Jesus had these men close to him so that they could be with him, learn from him, so that he could send them out. He could give them power for the time to heal the sick and to cast out devils. So we see here that Jesus called whom he would. Matthew Henry has an interesting quote about this. It says, not such as we should have thought fittest to be called, looking upon the countenance and the height of the stature, but such as he thought fit to call and determined to make fit for the service to which he called them. Peter was very rough around the edges. I know we pick on Peter a lot because there's just so much about Peter in the Gospels, but these men were not perfect. These men were not ready to go out on their own as soon as, you know, like, Five minutes with Jesus. Okay, we're the apostles. We're the disciples. You know, we're the closest disciples now. We're the apostles. We're going to go out now and preach. We're going to go out and heal. No, 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 no. They weren't quite ready for that just yet. Uh, they would be. They would be. But they had a lot to learn still. And so Jesus wanted them close to be with him. He was going to fit them for his service. Now Jesus called these twelve to separate themselves from the crowd and to stand with him. Their purpose? These twelve would be in the closest proximity to Jesus. They were there to be witnesses to his doctrine, manner of life, and patience, that they might fully know it and be able to give an account of it, and especially that they might attest the truth of his miracles. They must be with him to receive instruction from him, that they might be qualified to give instruction to others. This is also a quote from Matthew Henry. Now these twelve, who would see the miracles of Jesus performed and would hear the truth he would teach, were being prepared for when Jesus, having finished what his father sent him to do, would return to be with the father. Peter explains in Matthew 1.22 that the twelve's role was to bear witness to Jesus' resurrection. Their task was not to lord over people that they had been with Jesus, but to witness to the fact that Jesus was risen again. Jesus wasn't drawing these men, giving them this task so they could go and brag and boast, Hey, I've been with Jesus! I, I saw his miracles, I heard him teach. No! They were to, with compassion and grace and humility to share what they had learned. They had been in proximity with Jesus. They were to share the truth that he died. He was buried. He rose again. He never sinned. He lived a sinless life. Now, according to historical records, most of the disciples died a martyr's death. We know Jesus died. Well, many would consider a martyr's death, but he didn't stay dead. He rose again the third day. His disciples, from the reports that are out there, they died horrific deaths, most of them. They didn't die before they went everywhere preaching the gospel. By the time of Paul, Paul writing his epistles, they've been over the known world. Maybe not North America, maybe not Australia, maybe not some of these far-flung islands. But the known world, the gospel had reached there. And it started with these twelve minus Judas, but Matthias, with these twelve who went around sharing teaching, instructing, so that others went out sharing, teaching, and instructing, and telling people the good news. These twelve men sat at the feet of Jesus. They saw firsthand his life, his work, his compassion, his mercy, and his grace. With all that before them, it is little wonder that we can say of eleven of them that they were peculiar people. Rather, we wonder how one could betray him, but we'll discuss that more when we cover Judas in the future. Quickly, let's talk about the disciples. I actually haven't read their names. Let me go back here real quick and do that. Uh, I want you to be familiar with who these men are. So we have the name Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, Thaddeus, Simon, and Judas. Some of these, as we mentioned before, have two names. Of the 12 disciples, four were fishermen, 
One was a publican or tax collector. One is thought to have been a zealot. And we don't really know anything else about the other ones, what their occupations were. Two families uh, together. We have James and John. We have Simon and Andrew. So we have two sets of brothers. Eleven of the twelve apostles were thought to be Galileans. Um, Judas uh, Iscariot was the only Judean. Not one of the twelve was a professional scholar. These were not educated men in, in the terms of the, of the time. None of them had been to rabbinical school. None of them were part of the priestly line. Just ordinary men. Uh, Jesus would rename Peter. Simon was his natural name. His new name would be um, Peter or Cephas, both meaning rock. Some other facts about them. Um, Peter was brought to Jesus by his brother Andrew. James was the older brother of John. John is known as the disciple whom Jesus loved. We find that in, throughout John. Uh, Thomas was thought to have been a twin. I, I don't know. I've read some of this. We'll talk about it more in the future. I'm not sure about that, but he's thought to have been. Um, we read Philip. He brought Nathaniel to Jesus. Nathaniel, of course, is known for saying, can any th good thing come out of Nazareth? Uh, James the second, or the, often referred to as the less, um, is thought to have been called that because he was a small stature. Again, we don't know for sure. Just a thought. He chose a wide variety of people, wide variety of backgrounds. You know, not, not scholars, not, you know, publican, fishermen, the average average person um, that he picked. For now, I hope we've piqued your interest to learn more about the disciples because there is really a lot to learn, and I hope you'll take a little bit of time on your own to go and study a little bit about each of them. In a future episode, we will try to take a, an in-depth look at each of the 12, seeing where they are mentioned in the Gospels, and looking at what historical records say happened to them. If you've enjoyed this episode of the God's Peculiar People podcast, and make sure to be on the lookout for the next uh, episode in this series. But we'll be back next week with uh, another podcast. Thanks for listening.